Welcome to the Women Leaders Association Daily Member Podcast, where we believe we go further, faster, and have more fun when we go together. I'm your host, Julianne Kirkland. And in each Daily Member Podcast, we will pick out a great speaker from one of our meetings that we thought you would enjoy. You can access hundreds of recent speakers, book summaries, great articles, and more at no additional charge through your membership portal. If you would like to get involved in a Women Leaders Association Mastermind Group or find a networking group near you, or if you just need access to the membership portal, simply go to womenleaderspodcast.com to be connected. Now let's tune in for this incredible message. Yes. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Nicole Yonkers, and I um, am born and raised in Cleveland. I received my PhD from Case Western um, in immunology, and I spent 10 years um, doing basic science research and in infectious disease there. Um, following my PhD, I went into the pharmaceutical industry, and I've been there for the last 12 years in medical affairs. And I'm currently a regional director for the medical science liaison team in neurology at Sanofi. Um, and my, I would say my passion around women's leadership really comes from um, a very young age where I had a lot of conversations with my grandmother, who was um, an advocate for women in the workforce. Um, and I you know, now have a daughter and a team that I advocate for um, on a daily basis. All right, so just a quick disclosure, as I mentioned, I am employed by Santa Fe, but that all the information that I'm presenting today is really on my own behalf, and it's not really coming on behalf of Santa Fe. Um, and my talk today is going to go through three different areas of focus. So I first want to review some recent statistics that are related to gender in the workforce. And I think this is important because I think we've come a long way in terms of gaining progress around gender equality but that there has been a noted stall um, since the 1990s. And so I wanna kind of talk a little bit about what's um, potentially behind driving that stall and kind of the areas of growth that seem to be um, needed you know, today. And so the considering like what might be driving some of this stall, I wanna talk a little bit about unconscious bias and some barriers that I uncovered in my research around um, kind of larger organizations trying to implement gender parity in leadership positions. And then finally, I'll share a best practice that I and my team kind of came up with in our organization to try to overcome some of the challenges that relate to meeting our goals in gender parity and leadership. And I kind of like this graph that I am showing over here on the right of the slide, because I think it provides a nice visual of that we had this robust progress in, um, in gender equality that started in the early 50s um, and went through the late 1990s. But then in the late 90s, we started to see this leveling off in progress. And one of the key implication, one of the key factors that are being implicated in that stall in progress is this unconscious bias that we'll talk about um, in a bit. But first, I wanted to go through some recent statistics to kind of draw your attention to where the key areas of progress are really needed um, in today's workforce. And this graphic that I'm showing here comes from a recent Harvard Business Review um, article that was entitled How to Close the Gender Gap. And what this is showing is the results from a survey that they provided to over 150 female executives. And in this survey, they were asking the female executives to kind of gauge um, how much women are disadvantaged in different organizational processes. And what you can see at the bottom of this graphic is that it was overwhelmingly that these executive women were reporting that compensation and promotion for women was where we had the greatest deal of disadvantage. And I think that this can also be um, noted if you look at Fortune 500 companies and you see that only 8% of Fortune 500 companies are led by women and less than 1% by women of color. 
And so I think that this really shows how um, there is this gap in terms of promotion and women having um, positions of power at large organizations. And then in addition to the lack of promotion, I think looking at um, compensation and areas where we need to kind of bridge the gap is this uh, graph was pulled from a U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics from a survey that was given in 2022. And it's basically showing the median weekly earnings by sex um, and educational attainment. And what you can see is that no matter what level of education attainment there is, there is a gap between a uh, weekly median pay between men and women. And if you look overall at the average, women who work full-time year-round, they're paid only 83.7% of what men are paid. And it's also noted that this inequality is even greater for Black and Hispanic women. And so there's definitely a need um, to kind of focus, I think, on the management of compensation and promotion and how we can kind of close that gap um, and create more gender parity within the workforce. And so, as I mentioned, one of the key factors that's thought to be driving this stall and maybe impacting the inability to get to this gender parity in both leadership and compensation um, is unconscious bias. And so what is unconscious bias? The definition I've provided here, and I'll just read it to you, it's that it's learned attitudes and stereotypes that exist in our subconscious and can involuntarily affect the way we think and act. And I think a simple way to kind of describe this to you um, in terms of gender equality is oftentimes if you think of um, men versus women and competencies, most people would have the instinct to think that men have are more competent in skills such as math and leadership versus women. And then women are more competent in skills such as caretaking or um, empathy. And these unconscious biases, we all have them, um, and they kind of come from a very young age and your experiences throughout life and social norms. Um, and a lot of times we don't even realize when we have these biases. And I provided an example experiment that I wanted to just talk through for a couple of minutes because I think it gives a good example of how these unconscious biases um, can really create a disadvantage for women in the workplace. Um, and so there was an experiment done by a group at Yale. And what they did was they took over 100 academic researchers and they provided them with applications from students who were applying for a lab manager position. And what they asked these academic researchers to do was to um, judge the applicants based on competency tell them how much they thought these applicants would be paid for this role and whether or not these applicants would be considered for mentorship. And what they didn't realize is that the applicants, the applications they were provided were all the same in terms of experience and skill set. And the only difference was that the applications had randomly been assigned um, names that were male or female. And what they found in the results was that both the male and female science faculty members reported back that they would be more likely to hire the male. They ranked the male higher in competency and they reported a pay of $4,000 more than the female applicants. And so I think that this kind of represents that there is some unconscious bias and um, Again, going back to that thought about competency and where men may have a strong, there might be a stronger sense that men have um, more competencies in, you know, certain skill sets than women and that how that kind of translates into a disadvantage for women in the workforce. Um, and so in my own um, work within my team and in my organization, I you know, I work at a very large organization and there is a push kind of from the, the, the CEO and executive, you know, team to really try to drive um, parity in senior leadership positions um, within our organization. 
And I started to do some work on my own because I um, am a manager of a team of very talented individuals who have a lot of potential. And I think that there should be kind of no reason why we can't meet that 50-50 <laughs> gender parity in our leadership positions within our organization. And so I started to look into more um, about myself and what I can do to try to help drive that. And I kind of started thinking about unconscious bias and looking at, you know, evaluating my own practices and what I might be able to do um, as a hiring manager um, to try to help um, remove some of the biases that I might have on my own. And one of the best practices that I've done is a lot of times when I'm reviewing applicants for jobs now, I, um, you know, I obviously screen all of the applicants that come in, but like I'll kind of select a few. And then when I go through them in detail, what I'll do is I will cover up the name on, um, on the CV or resume that I'm reviewing so that I try to remove kind of any unconscious bias that I may have. Um, but in addition, so I went on to try to like look into more ways that I could try to help bridge this kind of um, greater organization initiative that's happening and um, help my team kind of fill some of the leadership gaps. And in my research and looking into what, what also might be creating barriers, um, I did find that there's this reported um, frozen middle that can occur at large organizations where when you have, um, you know, large initiatives coming from a top-down approach within an organization, if you don't have the middle managers or middle levels of the organization involved in helping to drive the conversation and push the initiative, that the initials, the, these initiatives will kind of get frozen and not move forward. And so they have this thing called the frozen middle. And I kind of identified with that myself when I discovered it because I realized that I am one of these middle managers in this large organization. And I tried to kind of think about this and how I might be able to change what I could do to advance women leadership goals um, at Santa Fe. And so I kind of thought through that, you know, there is a corporate initiative and with this large corporate initiative, there's a lot of resources put forward to help create gender equality in senior leadership positions. And one of the gaps is that it's such a large organization with so many resources. I think it's difficult for individuals to know what is available all the time or how some of these resources could be used. And so what I thought I could do was try to find ways to create a bridge between this larger um, corporate initiative and the resources that they're providing um, between that and my team to help provide more of an impact on my team. And the goal would ultimately be to try to have help facilitate transition um, from kind of these operational roles to more strategic and leadership roles for individuals on the team that have interest in doing that. And so what I sought out to do was put together um, a small group from my team to talk about um, how we can create this bridge for our team to try to leverage the resources that are available um, from, you know, the higher levels of the organization, and also tap into some of the knowledge that exists within our team. Because I do, I um, am managing a remote team of about, um, I mean, I have seven direct reports on my team, but then uh, there's a greater remote team of around 40 of us. And so I think that there's a lot of people that probably are doing different things and we don't always talk about it. And so the goal was to create sort of a local forum to provide a platform for our team to share dialogue and stories um, around some of the challenges that they are facing in terms of promotion or leadership development. And then also share some of the best practices and resources that might be available to us from the larger organization or even external resources that they may have found that they can share with the team. Um, in addition to thinking through like creating this local forum, we also wanted to create a space, a digital space, where we can house some of these materials that are identified by the team that relate to different topics um, that we chose to talk about in these forums. And then I think going back to 
um, thinking through what some of the the factors are that are driving the stall or barriers to getting gender parity. Um, we also wanted to just build awareness around gender bias and unconscious bias that we all have within ourselves as well as within the organization. And we talked through um, kind of focusing on the conversation on changing the system and not the women. And what I mean by that is we wanted to create something that um, would allow us to provide more recognition around these unconscious biases. And the goal isn't to make women think that they have to, you know, get more training or develop different ways of, of leading more like men, right? We want to keep the women the way they are, but have them be recognized as leaders as well. Um, and so it's kind of changing the perception or changing this unconscious bias that um, exists in all of us. So we basically um, created a, it's, it happens every other month, um, a local forum with my, you know, remote team of 40 or so individuals, and we made it optional for people to attend that would be interested. And the goals of the forum we set out to have was really just to share knowledge and best practices across our team. We wanted to bridge the resources, like I noted, that were offered by the company um, or that were, that individuals knew about that were externally available to support women's leadership. And the ultimate goal is then to kind of unleash the talent and potential within our team to help fill um, or bridge that initiative of trying to have 50-50 uh, gender parity and senior leadership positions within our organization. Um, and so we've just completed our first year of these local women's leadership forums on my team. And the topics that we chose to talk about are listed here. Um, the forums were 60 to 90 minutes um, each, and they were you know, remote forums just like this. And what we would do is um, have the first 20 minutes be where one or two individuals on the team would share their personal story or challenge um, or resource. Uh, with the team, and then we would open it up for just full team dialogue or Q&A um, so that people, other people can share stories or ask questions around these different, different topics that we chose to discuss. Um, but in addition to kind of meeting these initial goals of identifying resources and sharing best practices, I've really found that there's been additional benefits um, within my team because of this forum. And I think that allowing people to share their own personal stories and challenges has, you know, created this sense of vulnerability within our team. And in that, I found that my team has um, built stronger trust within each other. And there's also been a lot of camaraderie that's been created because of this. I think I've noted that a number of individuals within my team have connected who maybe hadn't connected in the past. They found, found commonalities that hadn't been discussed. Um, and so I think that there's benefits beyond even those that we kind of set out to attain with this local forum. I guess my final thoughts on being kind of change agents for um, gender parity and leadership. And I think that each of us, right, can be a change agent for gender parity. I would just say that I wouldn't underestimate the power of connection um, and dialogue amongst team members. I found that just giving people a place to discuss um, challenges and ideas and share um, experiences allows other people to better appreciate some of these unconscious biases that exist um, and allow people to connect um, on different levels outside of what they typically would within the workplace. Um, and I think that this dialogue is also kind of a, a way that we can try to start to change the system and not the women. Um, and challenge, you know, our thought process around that. Um, and I always encourage my team members to kind of think how they can start um, in being change agents today. And I think that mentorship, allyship, and sponsorship are all very easy ways that you can kind of um, make a step towards progressing in the right direction. Hey, my friend, if you enjoyed listening to this podcast, be sure to rate, review, and share your biggest takeaway. And if you're wanting more, you can access hundreds of recent speakers, book summaries, great articles, and more at no additional charge through your membership portal. 
You can also get involved in a Women Leaders Association Mastermind group or networking group near you. Or if you just need to access your membership portal, simply go to womenleaderspodcast.com to be connected. Because here at Women Leaders Association, we believe we go further, faster, and have more fun when we go together. That's all for today, my friends. Bye for now.